Okay, this is my review of the SSP18, which has been released today. I am Joseph, you've seen me before, so let's get this out of the way. I do work at Novridge, but this is my private channel. I can do whatever I want. I'm not getting paid for making this video. And this is just my thing, you know? It is what it is. Why am I making this video when I'm not getting paid? Because I do like the product. That already tells you a lot. So let's get right into the review. I've been playing with this for the past six months, which is a considerably long time, in my opinion, to get to know, you know, the pistol. And I, I did get to know this one pretty well, because I was torturing it. I was trying to kill it. I didn't pay for it, so I didn't care, really. I did some weird stuff with it, like seriously. I took it to the range when I was training real steel, I was playing regular games with it, and I really did my best reasonably, of course. I wasn't like smashing and throwing it uh, from a bridge or some, something like that. Uh, obviously, that's not recommended. But anyways, I did try to kill it and I, I didn't. This is the one I picked for myself. This is my private pistol now, even after the torture testing. Okay. I have several points on my laptop right there, so we will go through every single point. Like I said, the pistol is still working, so that's pretty much the review. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, it, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, uh, it is a solid gun. But there is a few things I want to talk about. Okay, the first thing on my list is a slight hang-up. That's how I call it. What does it mean? Sometimes, if the pistol is completely new, you have a completely full magazine, also a new magazine, that is important, can I explain later. When you uh, have it on the slide, you put in the magazine, full magazine, and you slide it forward, sometimes it can happen that it stays like this, you know, the slide is not completely forward. Uh, this is happening because everything in this pistol is really tight. Uh, the, the, slide, uh, the slide is tight, the barrel is tight in the slide, the sears, you know, the lips are tight. So this is happening because of that reason, because of the tightness of the, of the system. I'm gonna try to replicate this. I have a brand new SSP-18 right here. So I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna put in a brand new magazine. And it didn't do that. It is forward. But in any case, it's really hard to replicate when you, when you want it on camera. It, didn't, it doesn't happen like too often. Is it a big deal? No. You just slam it forward, then you fire a shot, you know, then it's fine. It never happened, never happened during the game, you know. Once you start firing the pistol, this disappears. It is only when the magazine is brand new and when you go from the slide lock like this. Now I cause a double feed, but that's fine. No, it still uh, didn't happen. Anyways, so that is the first thing. Is it a deal? No. Um, I actually kind of like that because that tells you, okay, it is a tight fit of everything. And over time, this, this particular pistol, after a few weeks, month, a month maybe, it stopped doing it completely. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, I don't care at all. I actually kind of like it. It is a plus for me. Okay, next thing is buttons. It can be sometimes a little bit hard to disassemble, especially if you are doing this for the first time. This is all you need to do, but it takes a little bit of practice, you know. The, there are two pull tabs right here on each side, this one and this one, and you have to push both of them down. And if you are not used to do this, sometimes it will take you, you know, one, two, three, three tries, you know, like you, you kind of a little bit struggle uh, with it but then you learn how to do it, you know, it can be a little, takes a little bit of practice. Definitely not hard. Is it a big deal? No, uh, I don't care. Push it down properly. You can feel it on the fingers a little bit, but uh, how often do you t need to uh, disassemble a pistol? Not too often, you know, you, you set the hop up once, then you don't really need to do it uh, every single game. Uh, it's a pistol. It is completely fine. So let's move on to the next point. Magazine stacking. Okay, that's a pleasant surprise um, because in this case what I found, don't quote me on this, but when you have the magazine like this, uh, it doesn't really matter if you stack it properly. At least that's my experience. I really, when I'm playing, I need to fill it fast. I just, you know, tuck, 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 done. If it's not stacked properly, something like this, 
uh, then I don't, I don't care. Uh, and the gun is working just fine. That is a good thing because you don't need to like meticulously, you know, like try to put the BBs right there and you figure out, okay, there is one BB missing, I still need to, no. Uh, in my opinion or in my experience, not opinion, this is not opinion, this is experience, this is not an issue in my case. Undercut magazine drop. So this is something that I learned when I uh, built or, you know, customized my old Glock that I've been using before. Uh, this is probably like seven years old. And by the way, you can see a lot of similarities in this, but more on that, more on that later. So when I, when I customized um, my Glock, I made these undercuts right there. And then I realized when I grip it really properly, something like this can happen. I grip the gun, you know, and, and the magazine goes out on accident because I, I accidentally activate this, this magazine release button with my, with my middle finger. Since I know this can happen, I really was careful. I was observing myself. How do I grip the gun? Because we also have these undercuts here, which allow you to get behind the gun properly and, you know, have a pretty nice high grip to control the recoil nicely. I was really trying to, you know, uh, see if this will ever happen to me, because then obviously something would have to, uh, something would need it to be changed. But no, not a single one. This didn't happen to me. Obviously, if I really try, if I like put my finger here, you know, this is obviously kind of, kind of ridiculous. Um, never on accident. So that's fine. My laptop went black. Uh, so this is not an issue. I'm sure you didn't even know that this can be a thing. Yes, it can be a thing. If you overdo it with the undercut, you will on accident start releasing your magazine like this, but not in this case. And the reason, why, what is the reason? This is not as deep as my undercut here. And also the magazine button is different. That's why, that's why we say, okay, it is the right size uh, because this is not the right size for this undercut. That's why it can happen. Can I also show it on the, on the other camera? You know, this is the SSP one. This is a bigger button. So that makes a difference. Flashlight modification to attach. That's a funny thing because Glock for some reason, uh, has this, this, uh, you know, cut here. It is, it is more narrow. So you cannot really put, a it, you cannot really put a normal flashlight there. I mean, uh, at least a flashlight that is made for a Picatinny. And I had to, you know, take my, take my Leatherman. I had to, you know, I had to cut it, you know, like this, just, just make a proper, uh, or Dremel it out. Uh, no, you don't have to, you don't have to do it now. I mean, this one already, already works like that, uh, but it doesn't work, <laughs> doesn't work normally. This one, Slam it on, bam, done. The solid, uh, like that. So that's a plus, obviously. I like that. Uh, some people don't even know, okay, Glock is not using um, normal, normal size Picatinny, which is, you know, they can do it. They, they are really big. Okay, uh, slide stopped, forced up. Okay, that is, that is a, a cool little thing, which I want to show you. So if the slide stop, doesn't go all the way, all the way up. You know, you use aftermarket magazine or something, uh, whatever. This slide is actually when it, when it goes forward, it actually forces, it forces the slide stop to go up, which is a really neat thing because, you know, it just locks in place. It will, it will last a long time. So that is a cool little feature. Why is it so? Because the surfaces are made in a way that they just, you know, slide, it gets forced upwards. So that's why it's doing this. And that's a, that's a cool little thing, which uh, probably only you now know about. Okay, next thing on my list is accuracy. And I don't want to talk about this too much. Uh, this gun is very accurate. I don't want to go into details because airsofters are not good at judging accuracy and I don't like the discussions about, about accuracy. Um, we did our test with Chris. Uh, you've seen the vlog in which we were shooting at a very long distance. I don't want to use any numbers because this is a pistol. It is way more accurate than it needs to be, in my opinion. So I, leave, I will leave it at that. Full auto switch. Okay, as you know, I don't really 
prefer full auto uh, switches and stuff because if I'm not making a video I always only use semi that goes for my rifles my pistols anything but for a video you know people like it it is a cool thing it is fun okay I'm gonna I'm gonna make a confession I actually kind of liked it I, I enjoyed um, sometimes playing with full auto um, either for testing or for making a video but still anyways back to the switch it's there it is a fun thing to have it is a good thing to have options we always like options there you have it that's your option but the switch what I was afraid of is that it will be very easy to like flip on on accident never 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 happened to me it never flipped on accident in my case it was always where it was supposed to be that is where I switched it the last time normally now I would say it was always on semi it wasn't I you know I was using both and it never like surprised me really that it would be like like halfway there it wouldn't fire or anything no it was always where it's supposed to be it is very tactile I, I do like that sides sides we all know that sides uh, especially the front side sometimes even the back side rear side tends to fall off uh, this after six months it's still there which I really do like so it doesn't you know it doesn't wobble at all it is very solid same goes for the for the back side and the screw that is holding the back side it is glued same goes for this one uh, so these sides are not coming off after six months and I'm very happy to see that uh, here I had a hard time ex exchanging this it is wobbling <laughs> yeah it is what it is very nice to see that you won't lose your sights that's a good thing nozzle nozzle this is not an issue at all uh, this is actually a good thing but a lot of people don't know um, why does the nozzle stick inside like this you know this nozzle it's forward 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 and now it goes back you know some people think this is an issue uh, the nozzle is sticking in the hop-up chamber it it's not it it seals not an issue I just wanted to throw it in there so that you know maybe you didn't now we know okay next point wear marks on the barrel okay this is a thing you know like I mentioned at the beginning the barrel is very tight in the in the slide because we want it as much accuracy as we as we can get from this system and what does this mean you will get wear marks uh, on the barrel once you start shooting this pistol this is a barrel after six months you can see it's not silver it's not the paint is still there not a big deal if I wipe it with my fingers it pretty much um, pretty much looks like uh, brand new but you can you can see it way more this is a brand new Glock I pretty much shot it just now in the studio when I was showing you something and you can already see a few few wear marks right here you see this okay also on this camera you see this a uh, little bit of wear marks right there you will see this and you will probably be like man what's happening that's such a bad paint job or a paint surface whatever just just wipe it just wipe it with your finger and and you are good to go so this is it now it's like now it's brand new okay next thing on my list is magazine wobble and I'm very happy to see that there is almost no wobble uh, to the side front and back very little and up and down nothing why is this important the hammer you know is striking the magazine and if there is a lot of magazine wobble the gun would have a hard time to consistently open the valve which would lead to consistency issues so this is completely fine and still drops nicely out of there co2 you know that is a good thing okay next thing on my list is capacity okay let's talk a little bit about the user experience it is 24 bbs uh, which if you want to use full auto a lot is I would say not really enough it is it just goes really fast if you keep holding the trigger the magazine will get empty really soon the rate of fire is quite high so I would recommend if you want to use full auto I would recommend short burst only like three to, to five shots then you can get five six bursts if you really want to use full auto you will have to spend a little bit more money and get I would say at least four four spare magazines 
uh, probably like having total of six max is not a bad idea or you can get the the big 50 rounder which will uh, which will be a lot of fun but then when you have it in the holster it can it, it just takes uh, more out which is uh, it is it is what it is uh, funny enough if you put the big magazine in there the 50 rounder it is still more lightweight than the ssp1 so that is cool full auto keep the burst shorts otherwise your mags will be empty the rate of fire is pretty decent uh, next thing is sears and the long travel so when i do when i do fire the shot you know you can you can feel that there is a little bit of like like grinding not really grinding but um, you know when you are on the wall there is still a little bit of movement movement and then it breaks that is a good thing because that means the contact surface uh, within the hammer you know when you are breaking the shot that the contact surface is long so you get to the wall and then you still have a lot of surface before the shots break in my books that's a good thing you know that will uh, make the gun law last a long time so uh, don't be you know if you are a freak when it comes to triggers like me and i mean in the end during the game you don't you don't even realize that it is a clean nice break and uh, the reset you will certainly appreciate the reset so large contact surfaces uh, it is uh, it is a thing uh, my glock you know this one when i fire this one what's wrong it doesn't work anymore okay this one doesn't work anymore <laughs> i don't know what's happening but you know this one is way more crisp and uh, <laughs> doesn't work anymore okay good next thing tighten the valves man where is valve tool okay uh, when you first receive the magazine let's take this one we have both valves here just open it and before you put any gas in there you know make sure that it's empty uh, just push on this valve right here let everything out if there is something and tighten the valve this is included in the box which is a nice thing i have one in my car i have one in my belt i have one in my gear bag this is a cool thing i i do like that uh, tighten the valve you know make sure that it's properly tight otherwise uh, it can be leaking you know tighten this one as well don't overdo it just make sure they are tight and you will be way happier when you put your co2 in there because otherwise it can happen that you know during transport the, the rings you know the o-rings just um, contract expand whatever gets loose and then you put in the CO2 capsule, you penetrate it and everything goes out. You will, you will freeze your hand. Uh, not a nice thing. Make sure valves are tight. Okay, then the question, CO2. Should you get the CO2 or should you get the gas variant? Me personally, I'm not even sure which one is better. I really do like, I don't have a gas bottle here, but I really do like the ability to just fill the magazine on the go, you know, during a break or whatnot. I don't have to change the, the cartridge in there. That is very handy. But I feel like the CO2 is, is snappier, you know. It is CO2, it can handle a very low temp temperatures, especially with this pistol, I do like that. But you have to change the, the whole cartridge when you want to refill. I think when you when you will be using like two magazines total you should definitely opt for the gas magazine because you can just refill and make sure that it's full if you have the money to buy six magazines man go ahead just just use co2 that's how i feel about it me personally i do use both i have usually a mixture of magazines you know i can i can fill the gas magazine and i know this is completely empty that's my backup of the backup and then uh, I can have CO2s as well for the extra, you know, the nice feel, I would say. That is CO2. BBs. Uh, which BBs? You are supposed to use 32s. Uh, in the end, it's your call. Uh, you don't have to use um, 32s. You can use um, uh, less heavy BBs like 28s, 25s. I will probably would pick 25s because I like the speed when I'm playing CQB and people are peeking around the corner like this, I need to hit them fast. I like the speed. But feel free to use 32s or even higher. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can overhop 32s, uh, your call. 
I think even 32 is overkill a little bit, but people do like that, so uh, not me. I'm more of the lightweight and fast uh, type of guy. Hop-up adjustment. Hop-up adjustment uh, is very easy, you know, apart from that you can sometimes struggle to pull this uh, both tabs down. You just open it like this, you know, you do your, you do your adjustment, you slide it back. Way better than other systems, I do like it. There will be aftermarket TDC barrel available in which you will um, use an Allen key and just tighten it from the top. Me personally, I prefer this system because I don't adjust my hop-up very often and I don't need it. So I'm, I'm fine with this one. Full auto. Okay, that is about uh, gas capacity. When you want to use full auto, I would, uh, I would be confident to say that you can get one magazine out of you know, the magazine when it comes to gas. Full auto is generally less efficient than semi only. Like refilling with your, with your speed loader when you are uh, in the middle of the game and you are using full auto, probably not gonna, not gonna happen. However, that always depends on the temperature, depends how much you fill the magazine, uh, depends on a lot of factors, which gas you are using. Um, uh, in general, I would say one magazine when you are using full auto. A little bit more from a CO2, not, not much really. Uh, when it comes to semi, you can easily get over um, one magazine. Again, there is a lot of uh, variables in this, so I don't want to give you an exact number. But it makes sense to carry a speed loader full of BBs, sometimes even two. It is a good idea. Okay, next thing is maintenance. How do I maintain this pistol? I will, I will not make a video on maintenance because I don't. I don't mean I didn't I never I mean I cleaned it once for a video like a week ago uh, when I was doing the maintenance uh, for the web and that was it I never cleaned this pistol I also mentioned that in that video uh, the only thing when you feel like the accuracy is not there just take out the barrel take a cleaning rod run it three times through it uh, loosen the loosen the bucking that's it, that's all maintenance I do and that's the all maintenance I will probably ever do. If I drop this in a, in a pond or something, I will probably just hose it with water, you know, put it in a sink, um, done. It is a gas blowback pistol and it can take it easily. Sometimes what I do, I just wipe it off, you know, a little bit. Maybe you can put a little bit of oil. Uh, do I do that? No, I just, I just like to think that I maintain my guns, but I don't really. So I'm not gonna pretend like I do, no. That's it for my review. Uh, let's sum it up somehow. I really do like this pistol. I will be using it, but it is your call, you know? Take my opinion for what it's worth. Um, is it a little bit more expensive? Yes, it is a little bit more expensive. You are getting uh, the bucking, the barrel, you know, non-dropping barrel, uh, precise in a barrel, uh, cool design in my opinion looks looks really nice and yeah is that worth to you to me definitely i didn't have to pay for it but even if i would have to pay for it i would i would get it uh, but that's me that's me uh, you do your own research please no matter what topic it is always do your own research uh, don't say hey i'm gonna get the ssp18 because joseph uh, likes it no do your own research make a sheet with plus and minuses and whatnot. Last thing, um, this cost me more and I had to upgrade it myself. You know, I have 601 barrel Raven PDI in there. I have a Maple Leaf 50 bucking in there. I don't know if you can see it, it's green. It's the same bucking as this one. Um, I did a lot of things to it, you know, the stippling, the trigger, the undercuts. Uh, here I also added like, uh, like cuts so that I can, you know, rip the magazine out. In the end, it cost me more and definitely a lot more time. I didn't do anything and I won't do anything with this one. So is it worth the money for me? Yes, for you. Um, make your own decision. In the end, it's your money and you will be playing with the gun, not me. So that's it uh, for this video. If you are interested in which holster I'm using, I also have a video on that link in the description. And yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, it works. Um, by the way, yeah. Also, uh, where, where? Uh, I wanted to talk about it at the beginning, but I forgot. Uh, this is how it will look like when you, you know, when you 
play with it for six months. You know, this will start wearing out the paint right here on the switch. You will have some scuff marks. You will have some, you know, things. Uh, I've been using it pretty hard, uh, but no, no big deal. No big deal. This is what you can expect. Done. See ya. And by the way, there is one little detail that I completely forgot about. Look down the barrel. It is completely black, you know, the inner barrel. It's not shining because it is, it is dark anodized. So you cannot tell that it's, a, it's an airsoft gun on the first side, at least. Not like this one. No, it's... Uh, you can see it. Here you can see it. Here you can see it. You know, love that. I see ya. I know it's a completely stupid thing, but I just, I just love it. Just little, tiny little details. Those matter.